Airsoft is a pretty interesting hobby that allows us to use our imaginations, get out of the house, run whatever gear we want, and just enjoy ourselves. That can be done each weekend with a few casual skirmishes, or in the middle of nowhere at a milsim operation, or even at a major competition with thousands of dollars on the line. But one thing is true about all of those situations. We tend to use a lot of attachments that realistically are pretty useless in some degree, all for the sake of looks. And so do I. I'm not free of this at all. Like, when am I ever going to use a non-functional empty peck box on a rifle that's battery connections or in the buffer tube? Some attachments are more useless than others, and some are only used in combination with other things. No matter how you spin it though, I'm bound to make some people pretty mad with this list, which is sponsored by Airsoft GI, who helped me do stuff like this by sending me out to all sorts of fields and arenas so I can put together some data. That's how I see so many different players and their playstyles. So if any of these attachments I'm about to talk about make you happy, then just add them all on. This is just one of two different videos I'm going to make about attachments. I still have to talk about the best and the most useful attachments. So just do you. But I'm still going to start this off with why I think the bipod is pretty useless in airsoft. Oh f*** off, how are you going to tell me that the bipod is useless? I'll tell you, but let me ask you something. How many of your guns do you absolutely need a bipod on that doesn't weigh more than 10 pounds? How many times do you deploy a bipod while playing at a 30 minute to an hour skirmish game? I'm not even going to ask those questions when it comes to CQB games because never have I ever seen anyone use a bipod in my 5 years of airsoft in a CQB arena. If I owned a 20 pound M240 Bravo, a 16 pound M14 EBR, and a full size steel constructed Barrett, then I admit that your bipod is pretty handy because those things get heavy when taking shots standing straight up and I don't like my guns just toppling over with expensive sights or big box magazines just hanging off the side. But when I see a player running like a $60 bipod on a $160 5 to 6 pound GNG combat machine or an even lighter Lancer tactical rifle, I can't help but to think that they wasted their money. The Harris bipod that I've got, I put it on my M27 IR from time to time because it looks great but I've never used it in game. I only use it whenever I want to display my rifle, so it still serves a little bit of a purpose. But in my opinion, only the heavyweight replicas, some precision rifles, and display guns really make the most out of this attachment like the DSR and the absolutely stunning WA-2000. And if we're talking about performance cons to using a bipod, then of course the weight that you add onto the end of your barrel can slow down your aim down sight time. Maybe not by much, but ounces equal pounds. And to get another insight on this, I asked Eric of Gun Gamers, and he sent me this. Unless a gun is super heavy and being employed in a stationary manner, a bipod can be difficult to take advantage of, especially given the quick pace and relatively close range of most airsoft engagements. You're not shooting far enough, or precisely enough, to need the extra stabilization for a marksman rifle. And machine gunners tend to need to be more mobile. Sling support and barricade bracing are generally better solutions for airsoft use. Grip pods can also be thrown in here if you really want to, but no one really uses those things anymore. I'm not hating on you if you have a grip pod. After all, who am I to judge with all the useless stuff that I have? But really, don't lie to me. When have you truly needed this attachment for anything but looks? I see people posted up at even Milsim operations with heavier guns like M249s and M60E1s, and they just post the gun up against a window seal or against a door, and the bipod is literally just right there. So yeah. Don't tell me that bipods aren't mostly ignored. Next up is another overbought thing that you normally see on newer players' guns. Visible lasers. When I first sunk money in Airsoft, I wasted a lot of my money on dumb stuff that I never used. But even then, I knew not to get one of these because I knew I'd never use it. Just tell me how much sense it makes to add one of these to your guns so you can play in broad daylight. IR lasers and stuff like that makes sense. Combo one of these with a proper MVG setup, and you'll wreck anyone at a nighttime skirmish game. Man, you'll have a major advantage over a lot of people in military simulation operations, but that doesn't go for these little things that you can get off of Amazon for less than a bucket of KFC. If it doesn't work for Sarah Connor, then it isn't going to work out for you, and you'll forget that you even had that attachment at the end of your gun probably in a month. Asking Gambit from Red Wolf Airsoft, he said standard red or green lasers he's seen someone using to indicate where they like their teammates to go. But they usually mount the laser onto their rifle, so that means that the user will need to disengage its initial point of aim just to aim a rifle at another location for indication. He sees more people accidentally shining lasers at another airsofter's eyes 
which overall is more damaging than actually helping in the game. If your argument is that you need to use one to place more accurate shots, then where are the lasers on the sniper rifle builds I see? That's what their scopes are for, and tracer units pretty much make visible lasers obsolete. Even Brain Exploder said, it gives away your position, it's not allowed at half the fields, has no real benefit over a zeroed in red dot, and can be dangerous to your eyes. They still look good on pistols like the Mark 23, but even this legendary pistol by Tokamuri is infamous for the virtually useless laser that it's packaged with. So if bipods and visible lasers are on this list for how little they get used, then let me put canted sights here for being almost entirely useless. You almost never see these on any build nowadays, unless someone is replicating specific builds or are just going for looks, and I understand why, but they don't work. In the real world, canted sights can be very useful, especially when optics go down or when you're switching up from long range to mid range or close range in a second. But for airsoft, the use disappears completely because of how hop-up works. Anyone knows that hop-up controls how fast your BB spins backwards, giving you lift. Not enough backspin, your BBs fall short. Too much, and you'll be shooting the sky. So if you want a nice balance, so you can get all the range that your guns can offer you, but you use canted sights, well, you'll be missing much more than you expect. What you should expect is a lot of BBs going left, right, and nowhere near where you actually want to hit. Unless you're going to be using these in sub 50 foot engagements, I really stress you, give up on canted sights if you're going for performance. It's just not there. And that really sucks because you might be able to make a good looking racer Milson build with a pair of these on the top of your gun, or more like off to the side. You probably figured out by now, if you're new to Airsoft, that a lot of the attachments that you see are for looks. Some are just thrown in to finish a certain build, and even if it's there, it might be ignored altogether when it's in game. And here's a really good example of that. When was the last time that you saw anyone actually use a bayonet? Of course, no one is going out there with a real razor sharp steel knife at the end of their barrels, but there's always a couple rubber knives connected to M4s or AKs at small scale milsim events, and even at skirmish days from time to time. Knife kills are already an achievement to pull off. that can have people talking for the rest of the day, especially if you can get multiple quiet takedowns with a rubber knife. But who here has actually gotten several bayonet kills or even one. You can mount a bayonet on so many different guns, from M4s, AKs, M14s, G36s, and so on. And I personally love seeing them on rifles like M1 Grands, Mosins, and other World War II and World War I replicas. However, their usefulness is mostly for looks. This is partly in thanks to safety kills and bang bang rules being implemented at most fields and arenas. The bayonet is basically useless now, so why have it connected to the end of your barrel when doing this is so much easier? If you can put up with the added length, some of the laughs that you might get from some snobby people, and maybe it being bent, then go get some close up bayonet takedowns. Just don't get too crazy with it. A tap is enough. Anything else will probably get you in a lot of trouble, even with a rubber knife. If I haven't completely lost you yet, then I just might whenever I tell you why I think this is the absolutely most useless attachment in all of Airsoft that's also probably the most used attachment at the same time. Even if you're against adding all sorts of useless crap to your guns, you at least have one of these and you're probably not using it for any real reason besides looks. You just might be using it out of a weird instinct. But real quick, I have a couple attachments that I want to mention. The blade trigger and gun shields. Objectively, both of these are really good attachments, as one can jump up your trigger responses in semi to a level that gets confused for full auto with a good set of gears and a motor, or an HPA engine inside of your build. While the other one can literally make you impossible to hit if you peek barriers or corners the right way. Both of these are also banned and hated almost everywhere. The gun shield isn't the most serious of attachments and is used more to replicate Rainbow Six Siege setups, but if you did take one of these out to a game, expect a lot of people to give you hate for it or just ask the admin to tell you to take it off or just go home. And as for the blade trigger, well, just watch this. Now, if you're already hating how fast he can shoot in semi with his setup, how would you react if it was so much easier to do that? That's what the blade trigger offers with the right setup inside and is why so many arenas and fields have them permanently banned or demand that you have a trigger guard on your gun, making blade triggers impossible to install. But those are just two extras. And with that wrapped up, 
let me tell you now why I think the mock suppressor should be at the number one spot. If you're not using one of these to quiet an HPA gun, to hide an extended inner barrel, or to stabilize an outer barrel against a handguard of some sort, then why are you even using one? For looks, right? It's like having a scope on your rifle with more zoom than you'd ever even need. You know you can't reach out with any airsoft gun in existence to make most of the zoom useful, but at least it looks good. I mean, at the best, you can use the zoom to spy on what's happening elsewhere on the AO. But back to suppressors, just look around at any field, at any arena, any event, doesn't matter. You'll see dozens of mock suppressors, and most of them are completely empty. It's rare to find people using these to keep their extended inner barrel safe, and even fewer of them are actually tracer units. I'll admit that I even have this big ass G&G tracer unit just for looks. I got it for free, since the charger that went along with it was missing, but it's huge, and some guns look really good with big suppressors on them. But check this out. The HFC Mac 11. It's compact, lightweight, and easy to maneuver. But then you screw on this massive thing at the end of the barrel, and what do you gain? Maybe some eye candy, but now it's almost twice as big, and the gun sounds exactly the same. This is airsoft we're talking about here, so these things do nothing for anything that's not an HPA or a gas blowback. And I say gas blowback very lightly, because even then the sound is coming from the bolt and the moving parts inside not a vast pressure of air coming from the barrel like you get from a high pressure air gun. Probably the worst defender I can think of is the SR-25. Have you seen what the suppressor looks like on those rifles? And again, they do nothing for the replica besides add some looks. And don't get me started on how much some people will spend on these things, on a metal tube with maybe some trademarks on it that can't even be foam filled. Oh, and if you're putting a heavy mock suppressor at the end of a gas blowback pistol's barrel, then I don't know what to tell you, mate, but expect to have your gun perform like crap because all that weight is going to add pressure to the slide, which will drag against the outer barrel. That's why lightweight tracer units have been made. They screw on, don't put on a lot of weight, and actually serve a purpose. I'm not saying stop using mock suppressors or that you should feel stupid for adding them onto every airsoft gun you see. Just don't act like you're gaining anything besides some new sound effects and maybe some extra nice gun points. Because you ain't suppressing anything unless you're smart and use a foam filled one with an HPA gun. Or if you're actually hiding an aftermarket inner barrel that sticks out past the outer barrel. And I guess with that said, I hope you can understand now why I consider the mock suppressor to be the most useless attachment in airsoft. Am I wrong to add this onto my list? Maybe, but... I know that I'm not the only one who thinks this. So many people I asked in the industry, including store owners and representatives, told me the same thing. They sell a lot of them and other attachments on this list. And they even think it's kind of funny looking at Airsoft from the outside for a moment. My point with this list isn't to persuade people to change how they play or how they enjoy the game of Airsoft. Play exactly how you want as long as you're playing fair and not being a jerk. I just want to educate a few new players so they don't waste money on some of the things that they think are essential to playing the game of airsoft. Basically useless or not, it's subjective to each end user. What I find most annoying is most people don't set up their gear nor rifle base on their purpose nor their skill set. They throw on a lot of cool tactical stuff, but don't use it 90% of the time. Like I said, I spent so much money when I really didn't need to when I first started playing airsoft, and you probably did too. Make these five items things that you can put off until you're really sure you want them to put together a build that you have in mind. That's why I actually like Airsoft, and that's why I'll always like the game. It's a game where I can add a bipod to my rubber knife and get a lot of Battlefield Friends quotes thrown at me, and where I can run a rifle like an ICSM-1 Grand with a modern looking kit and just use my imagination to have even more fun. Just don't take this crazy game of tag with toy guns too seriously. Now I should probably get started on my second edition of this attachment countdown, with five useful airsoft attachments. I'll even keep an eye on the comments of this video because I'm sure a lot of you guys have things to say about certain attachments that should be on that list. And if you have any questions about stuff that I said here today, then go ahead and ask away. I would like to thank Dayton of House Gamers Airsoft, Brain Exploder, Gun Gamers Eric, Red Wolf Gambit, and everyone else that helped me put this list together. Links to all their channels will be linked down below like they should be. But until the next video drops from the city of San Antonio, this has been Scott Hollenbeck, and I will be sure to see you all next time.